Hello people, how are you? In this video, we want to look at Perthes disease. Basically, this is also called as Coxa plana, pseudo coxaldia, leg calve Perthes disease. It feels like too many names. Okay, let's try to break it up. What is Coxa? Coxa means hip, right? Hip, which is hip joint, this one, where your femoral head is sitting inside your um, acetabulum. This is hip, okay? So, this is Coxa. And plana means what? Plane. It has become flat. Okay. So the femoral head has become flat. So this is coxa plana. So look at this. Coxa is referring to the hip. So this is the hip joint. If uh, this uh, becomes flat, the femoral head has become flat. Okay. The femoral head has become what? Flat. Plana. Plan. Plana. So that is the name. Okay. So this was given by this uh, scientist leg, author leg. So that is why it is named after him and interestingly it is uh, affecting the leg right so this is actually affecting the 5 to 15 year old or 5 to 10 year old boys okay who will have a limp so it will be a painful limp what limp it will be a painful limp so <clears throat> this is the uh, Parthis disease okay so uh, what is this what is happening here there is osteochondritis of the epiphysis of the femoral head so this is the explanation what is happening to the femoral head why is it becoming flat osteochondritis osteochondritis what is this osteochondritis something to do with the cartilage and bone right that's what it looks like some inflammation so on itis so inflammation of bone cartilage so that is what is osteochondritis so look at this so there is bone death they have indicated here this is Perthes disease there are many types of osteochondritis like um, uh, so many other things are there if you want you can look at this but in this we will only look at only only look at Perthes disease okay which was affecting what the femoral head okay now uh, this is actually a differential diagnosis for TB hip that's why it is important you should understand why they are asking in the exam it could be a differential diagnosis for TB hip now what is Perthes disease it is the osteochondritis of the epiphysis of the femoral head the femoral head has partly or wholly become avascular and deformed it has become what avascular and deformed partly or wholly the hem femoral head so here you can see the femoral head has partly or wholly become avascular and deformed okay so uh, what are the causes let us look at they don't know the definite cause cause is def not definitely known okay but they are thinking that there is a recurrent episodes of ischemia so there is some blood flow that is not happening correctly to this place okay this is a susceptible age group and probably because episodes of synovitis okay that is all they are telling about the cause okay so let us look at the causes here basically more than cause they're talking about the factors because of which this uh, all this uh, ischemia occurs so what are the factors which affect the genetic factors can be there abnormal growth and development so basically these people will have a bone age lower than their uh, other people okay and uh, environmental factors can affect socio-economic status if this person has had a trauma if there is some synovitis synovitis is what they, everybody is talking about synovitis okay passive smoking that means if probably people around these children are smoking etc abnormal venous drainage so basically there is problem with blood supply smoking can cause problem in blood supply venous drainage uh, is not happening so there is blood supply problem right arterial block infarction all this makes sense increased viscosity of blood all these are affecting what your blood 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 supply right smoking also will cause construction of the vessel so obviously that will also lead to problem in the blood supply okay to this uh, uh, part now let us look at the clinical features of Perthes disease so a 5 to 10 year old boy he will come with pain in the hip which is radiating to the knee he may be limping there may be limitation of abduction and internal rotation so there is thus you see the leg is kind of out right it's ab uh, he's no, limitation of abduction and internal rotation okay and a little shortening can be there a little shortening or no shortening also can be there okay and uh, so what are the main uh, limited movements abduction and internal rotation are limited okay <clears throat> then what else are you seeing here there are some stages pathologically they are saying what the stages are you have the stage of synovitis stage of necrosis right stage of necrosis and stage of revascularization and healing okay 
so uh, this some people are including this revascularization some people are not including but otherwise you have to write right how will it heal without revascularization so uh, what are the four stages synovitis this is the starting point of everything they are suspecting then avascular necrosis really bad this necrosis thing because of which it's becoming flat so coxa plena it has become revascularization will happen and finally it will heal so these are the stages of perthes disease now um, in this necrosis and all you have to know no some uh, sequestra is there that is corally form type of sequestra that is technical if you want to know now let us move on to investigations investigations so the investigation of choice is uh, mri for early perthes disease it is mri for early early uh, per, per, per this disease it is mri uh, anyways we will talk about the x ray finding see initially in early stages you may not find anything it may resemble a transient synovitis okay in early stages it may just resemble a transient synovitis but later on it will show up some features what features you will see out of proportion than the physically whatever is wrong you will see lot of things wrong in the x ray like the joint space will be widened and in tb hip the joint space will not be widened so this will give you a clue okay it's not tb hip it could be perthes disease okay so here is the x ray that they have shown in the textbook now let us go to the radiological examination same thing we are continuing what will we will see joint space is increased hip joint space is increased this we already said then there will be collapse and sclerosis of the epiphysis of the femor femoral head this is very sad right there is collapse and sclerosis of the epiphysis of the femoral head because there is necrosis here coxa vara no sorry coxa plena coxa plena okay then we told you right in the x ray you will see the striking changes okay and when you do this bone scan using using technetium etc radioactive isotope etc you will see that there is decreased uptake by the head of the femur okay and there is something called a sagging rope sign in the uh, radiological examination okay there is some uh, staging here we are not looking at this but you have to know this one there is there is uh, some cataral cataral uh, groups okay based on the involvement of the head there is some cataral group so epiphyseal involvement sequestrum collapse metaphyseal abnormality so if it has come till metaphyseal o oh. so epiphyseal then sequestrum then collapse then metaphyseal there is some group 1 group 2 group 3 group 4 so entire epiphysis there is sequestrum there is collapse there is even metaphyseal abnormality that becomes group 4 looks like this is cataral cataral okay this is the extent of involvement of the head and based on this this same guy has given the head at head is at risk sign head is at risk sign there are many things to say that the head is at risk okay so you have some clinical signs you have some radiological signs like gauge sign etc calcification metaphyseal involvement etc subluxation so many things but among this the um, the only pathology that is amendable that is treatable is the lateral subluxation everything else you can't do anything looks like so that is why they are considering only this lateral subluxation if it is there that is the only thing you can fix so this lateral subluxation is a radiological sign for head at risk so only this is fixable so they are only concerned about whether you can fix or not so lateral subluxation is it there or not that's all they are concerned about okay so these are the head at risk signs now let's move to the treatment of perthes of perthes disease guys so basically uh, here see this there is an avascular necrosis right this can uh, there can be spontaneous revascularization so uh, basically this point wherever there is necrosis at this stage till the revascularization you should make sure that you protect the hip from deformation that's all they are saying okay it can revascularize but you have to do, at this point they want to protect the hip okay so basically what is it they want to prevent the head from misshapening when the bone is in the softening phase please protect the hip that's all they are trying to say okay so you want to prevent the hip from misshapening you want to protect it okay because you know the faces the faces are synovitis then there is necrosis then there is revascularization and then there's healing so looks like you have to give it some re revascularization okay the head is required to be kept inside the acetabulum while the revascularization takes place looks like it is spontaneous kind of a thing right so how will you do this conservatively so either you can do a non ambulatory bed rest etc 
then uh, ambulatory that means if the person has to move then you make sure that you give this uh, uh, orthosis brace this is the toronto brace then the scottish right orthosis tech some complicated name brace so give some brace just make sure that the hip of the uh, sorry the head of the femur uh, stays inside the acetabulum okay uh, then surgical methods are also there uh, for containment they are doing some osteotomy here varus femoral varus d rotation osteotomy okay and then they are doing some salters inanimate osteotomy okay can you say femoral femoral varus varus d rotation d rotation osteotomy osteotomy and say salters salter inanimate inanimate osteotomy osteotomy Thank you. So now let's take a recap. In this video, we wanted to look at Perthes disease. Basically, it's also called as coxa plana <coughs> or pseudo coxalgia. It is also called as leg calve Perthes disease based on the person who described it first. Okay. So basically, what is it? Um, it is nothing but the osteochondritis. Osteochondritis. So basically, there is softening, right? Um, osteochondritis can happen in many places. If it is in the femoral head, they are calling it as Perthes disease. Okay, osteochondritis of the epiphysis of the head of the femur. That is, or, or that is os, uh, Perthes disease. Okay, so basically this is a differential diagnosis for uh, TB hip. That is why you should know it. Uh, here, what is happening? The there is a poor blood supply to the femoral head for whatever reason, some trauma or some uh, uh, passive smoking, etc., etc. The blood supply here is less. So, what happens? This bone is dying. This part of the bone, the upper epiphysis of the femur, is uh, having uh, an ischemia, necrosis. Okay, so that is why. Uh, this uh, hip joint itself will get deformed. This child can have a limp. Hip pain, limp. Okay, so basically this can happen. Why? Because of transient synovitis, passive smoking, which can constrict the blood vessels, abnormal venous drainage, arterial block, increased viscosity of the blood. Anything that will stop blood supply, right? Uh, it could be genetic in these people. There could be abnormal growth and development. Some environmental factors in lower economic status, etc. Okay. So uh, the clinical features is five to ten year old boy with a pain in the hip, uh, uh, often which radiates to the knee. He can be limping. There can be limitation of abduction and internal rotation. There could be a little shortening also of the limb. The stages are uh, uh, stage of synovitis, stage of uh, necrosis. Then you have stage of re. vascularization and then stage of healing so the blood supply will come back but in this time um, you should uh, make sure that uh, the uh, hip joint doesn't get deformed okay so basically there are different types of sequestra uh, in uh, perthes disease the sequestra is called as corally form sequestra the investigations coming to investigations you saw that the mri is the uh, best for early perthes disease because in early you cannot uh, know very well it will resemble a transient synovitis but further on you can make out even in x ray now in x ray the uh, the features will be out of proportion from the physical findings okay the joint space will be wide joint space will be wide in perthes disease unlike tuberculosis okay and uh, there will be what will you see the femoral head there will be collapse of this femoral head sclerosis of the epiphysis of the femoral head when you do bone scan what will you see you will see that using this technician and all when you do bone scan you will see that there is decreased uptake by the head of the femur there is some sagging rope sign also okay based uh, on uh, some radiological findings there is some staging given some by some elizabeth town etc we are not looking at this but uh, based on the extent of the involvement there are some uh, groups given by ketterall basically group 4 means it is like uh, even metaphysis is uh, uh, involved there is sequestrum there is collapse the entire epiphysis is involved kind of a thing okay there is something called as a head at risk sign the femur head looks like is at risk so there are a lot of clinical signs to say, say whether the head is at risk or radiological signs also to say whether the head is at risk but the only thing that they can correct uh, till what stage can they correct is this lateral subluxation so if uh, th this is amendable so they are concerned more about lateral subluxation okay then um, basically like we told you there is there will be revascularization over a period of years so at this time you should make sure that the 
deformation does not happen so you have to protect it that is all is their intention to prevent the head from misshapening so you can do non ambulatory you can have bed rest uh, etc or ambulatory you can give some kind of braces like this and remember some toronto scottish etc etc then uh, surgically also you can do some osteotomy de rotation osteotomy and uh, salter innominate osteotomy etc to uh, uh, prevent the deformity okay so this is parties disease hope you understood something guys see you in the next video bye bye